Okay, now let's see how this looks in a graph. Let's do first, so this is the, the, the demand and supply, uh, the equilibrium point with no tax, the quantity is 2, and the price is $18. Notice that I put the two intercepts over the two curve, 22 for the demand curve, and 2 for the supply curve. Now, um, now let's let's assume there's a tax, and let's put it first in the in the demand curve. So the supply, the demand, is going to shift down by exactly two dollars, which is the amount of the tax, and the new equilibrium point will be around will be right here. The quantity at that point is one point eight. The price at that point is sixteen point four. And then um, if the difference between the intercept between here and here is $2, then the difference between this point and that point is also $2. So we know that that point right there is 18.4. Um, okay? So now we have, we have our, our whole analysis, and, and we can see that, uh, uh, that the effect of on consumers on this tax is that the consumers pay 16.4 uh, uh, $16 and 40 cents to the to the sellers but then they have to send two dollars to the government so they actually effectively are paying eighteen dollars and forty cents which is forty cents worse than before so the buyers are worse off by um, by forty cents All right now uh, the sellers on the other hand well, before they had $18, and now uh, they're getting only 16.4, so they're worse off by $1.60, which is the rest of the $2, right? So the sellers worse by $1.60. So of the $2 tax, the sellers are kind of putting up with $1.60, and the buyers are putting up with $0.40. Cents. That's when the uh, tax is on the, uh, on the buyers. Now let's put the tax on the sellers. So we know that the tax, what they're going to do is that it's going to shift the supply curve to the left by exactly $2. So everywhere is going to be $2, and the intercept is $2. And also, as you see, between here, the actual price that you end up with the supply that we found out in the previous video is 18.4. 18 and this point right here, uh, it's also eight, um, two dollars. So, um, so now we can see that so the equilibrium point ends up being the same, one point eight, but the price, the equilibrium price, end, end up being eighteen point four. Now, how worse off our buyers? Well, buyers are worse off by forty cents because before the tax on sellers they were paying eighteen dollars, and now they're paying eighteen dollars and forty cents. So they also worse off by forty cents. How worse off are the sellers? Well, the sellers are worse off by one dollar and sixty cents because before they were getting, they were receiving effectively eighteen dollars, but now they're only receiving eighteen point four minus two. They're effectively only getting sixteen point four cents every time they sell a unit, which is one dollar and sixty cents less than it was before. So you saw that it doesn't really matter who sends the tax to the government. The reduction in quantity is the same. But also, effectively, the burden on the buyers and the sellers is also the same. So what determines the burden on the sellers and the buyers, we're going to get into in a different video. But for this one, the important part is that you see that the effect uh, on the consumer, on the total surplus, uh, on, the, on the market, on the welfare in the market, is that it reduces the trades in the market. So this many people that were, see this, um, this many people that were trading before, those trades don't occur anymore. So where is, um, you know, how can we measure that in dollar terms? Well, in dollar terms, we know that we use surplus to measure that. So this little triangle here is exactly the loss of surplus. And as we learned in a previous video, we call that a deadweight loss. We call that a deadweight loss because a surplus that in the free market would have achieved that, and now we don't have that. And it's pretty easy to actually get the, the actual number in dollar terms because all we have to do is apply a little geometry here, right? So um, it will be simply uh, multiplying one side of the triangle, let's say this side, which we know is equal to 2 minus 1.8, um, by the other side of the triangle, let's say this side, which we know is equal to 2, right? 18.4 or 16.4. 
and divide that by two. And that way, pretty easily, we can get the, um, the deadweight loss of, of this particular tax in this market. All right? So do, using a little geometry, we can get that. So in dollar terms, we know that the deadweight loss in this market is going to be equal to uh, 0.2. All right. Now, uh, and, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's the sellers who are sending this tax to the government or is it the buyers are sending this tax to the government. If the quantity on the market is reduced to 8.8, that the, the deadweight loss is going to be the area of that triangle, which is going to be equal to the one side. The see, one side is the reduction in quantity and the other side is the tax. Now, finally, the only thing that should be uh, clear here is the, is the revenue by the government. You see, the, the, the government revenue is going to be equal to the tax, which is $2, right? So this right here, times how many units are sold, times 1.8. So the tax is going to be this area right here is the tax, is the uh, government revenue, all right? In this case, it will be $2 times 1.8.